Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh! Welcome back to the Jenny McCarthy Show. Yes. I'm Jenny McCarthy Welberg. Yes. Joining us in studio, Eduardo Nunez. Welcome, Eduardo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a yes. Pleasure. 2018 <laughs> World Series champion, Boston Dominicano Red Sox, Red Sox baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you just heard him hit a uh, pitch hit three homer uh, run to win the game. The three first run one. homer. Three run Thank homer. you. Over the green monster. How has that moment changed your life, Eduardo? You know, that was you. That was you. Just see the, the stadium, see the crowd getting crazy. I never see the crowd that, that happy, that excited in that moment. So that was really special for us and for me excited. That was such a such a great moment. You have, I think, the perfect spirit to win in Boston. You know, we didn't win for so many years. And then with the team with Big Poppy and Manny that came back from three down to the Yankees, they called that team the idiots. I'm not calling you an idiot. <laughs> but they had such a free spirit and an energy that – that is really the spirit it takes to win in Boston. You can't be like a high intensity, stressful person. Your spirit, I think, was the one of the keys to the Red Sox winning this World Series because you just seem to have so much fun on the baseball field, like you just so much gratitude when you play. And, and I think your energy is really one of the most uh, unsung reasons that they won. Thank big, you. Big part of it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I try to to just happy and uh, enjoy the moment. Just yep. be everybody around me, just getting loose. We have yep. fun. Everything going around, it doesn't matter. Yep. So we have now, fun. Last year, last year you're killing it in the L- ALCS against the Astros, and then your knee gives out running to first base. What did this season mean to you? You know, it means mean a lot. It mean a lot. After last year, I was really disappointed in myself. I tried to help the team to win the World Series, and I get hurt. We lost in the first round against the Houston. So... I talked to Boston and I told him I want to come back just to win a championship. I want to wow. win one day in my life, and I think that's the perfect thing, the perfect group. And this year, the first meeting we have was just about relationship and win the championship. We had to finish what we fought last year. Mm-hmm. And we did, and we worked hard. We, we make a lot of sacrifice, and the good payoff. How good was Alex Cora for this group? Obviously, you won, but it, everybody seems to just love him so much and, and respect him. Um, is Did he just speak to you guys in a more personal way that helped you bond as a team than a typical manager would? For sure, for sure. He really communicate to players. He always want to hear what, 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 what you feel, what, what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. He want to be your friend. He hang out with us. He make everybody together, no ego in the clubhouse. So everything is the same, everybody the same. And right. I think without him, we know it wouldn't even work wow. won the World Series. Wow. You know, I couldn't believe how many extra innings there were. <laughs> <laughs> it was 3 a.m. and Donnie is like, stay awake, stay awake. <laughs> I mean, how do you, uh, how do you just stay energized? I mean, I guess it's the World Series, but uh, you've got to be exhausted. Yeah, what's the south? Where's the south? The, the, we just talking about the in the dugout. We only need two more wins. We know how ta- we know how time for be tired. Mm-hmm. It's today or not today. So we run all all the way through here, and now we don't get excuse to be tired too long. Everybody tired. Everybody sore. We have to finish it. We have right. to finish it, and now we're here. And I think all the thing. They keep together, they keep with energy, and that's why we we come through. But now there was some key moments in that extra inning game, even though you guys lost, because, you know, my wife has never watched a baseball game that lasted that long, so I was telling her what's going to happen. I said, listen, if Evaldi comes in, he's never coming out. She was like, what do you mean? I said, we have no pitchers left. He's going until the game's over. But when you got flipped over by the catcher, you got knocked over on the little uh, <laughs> foul ball. Then um, when you ran to first, you got you looked like you were hurt. And I kept saying, we can't lose him. And she said, why? I said, if he goes out, there's nobody left to play. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. going to be eight guys on the field. <laughs> um, were, you, were you hurt? Or was it just like a little nagging thing that came up? Or, and how bad was it? And were you afraid that you'd have to come out of the game? No, I, I was hurt. I was hurt. My ankle was twist. Uh, 
after the series with the Yankees, the last hour I make, yes. I tweet my ankle. Yep. We celebrate and I go to the training room to take my ankle. Wow. So another game in Houston, I twist my ankle again. I had to go on the game. Then when the catcher flipped me over, yep. I lay in my ankle. So wow. I had to run hard to make something happen. Yep. Because we were tying. Yeah. So I hurt my ankle again, and I told Ali, please don't give me some break. Don't take me out of the game. And he told me, we don't have any more players. You have to finish it. Yeah, yeah. And I was laughing. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> 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 You're thinking the same thing. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, he can't come yeah, out. Yeah. He has to play on one yeah. leg. Yeah. He, he told me, breathe, take your time, and you have to play. We don't have time to to this. I say, okay, just let me laughing, let me breathe, and I have to get going. How do you deal with, like, you know, critics, the journalists that write anything about you that might piss you off? How do you deal with that? You know, we, we try to, to be out of the social media. We try to be out of the Twitter. We try, we, we, we try to be out of those, everything about, about us. We, when I go to the hotel, I, go, I play Netflix, or I, I, I watch a movie or talk with my friend, talk with my family. So they keep me real, they keep me real. I don't wanna hear a lot of things good or bad about me, or about us. So that's how we, we, we're doing. Right, now one person, my wife found it funny because we watched the interview after the game and Big Poppy was doing an interview I don't know if you saw this, but he said, Eduardo always milks the, the moment when he gets hurt. He acts like he's going to die. And then a minute later, he's all better again. Did you hear Big Poppy say that? Yeah. Has he said yeah. it to you? He's killing me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> How did you react? You know, it's funny. It's funny because sometimes I really hurt. Like, if it's about right. he by pitch, it's yeah. painful. It's yeah. painful. He maybe had like 300 pounds. He maybe it's not painful for him, but for me it's really well, painful. He had all that stuff on yeah, his arm. I, he had really like a robot <laughs> arm that he used to wear. I'm really skinny, so it's painful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you are really hurt. Um, what you, we were talking about during a commercial about the celebration in Boston, and you know we heard on the news that you know people were throwing beer bottles, and I guess they did that with the Patriots, but uh, uh, Gronk was catching the beer bottles. You guys weren't. You guys were getting hit by him, along with the trophy. What else were they throwing? You know, they, they started throwing, like, one at a time, beer, tequila, like, coke, water. It was fun at the beginning. But then <laughs> everybody at the same time started throwing beers, <laughs> to tequila. We're like, whoa, tequila? what's going on? <laughs> yeah, everything. It's unbelievable. And at some point, it was a little trifle. But what's fun? What's fun? You see that the fan throw beers. They want all to, to drink. Then when we throw back some, and they they drinking. I think what well, what's a good time? What's a good time? I would just put the catcher in front and just have him in the midst, <laughs> just catching all. Well, the they drinks. were saying every all the players kept missing the the cans. They kept <laughs> dropping them because they didn't have their gloves. Yes, yes, <laughs> you're right. Is is there a big prankster on the team, Eduardo? Me what? A big any pranks or anyone that played jokes on you, like the guys, they fuck with you a little bit, play jokes. Yeah, yeah, we we all play, we all, all always play joke. We always fuck each other. We always <laughs> mess it up. We always mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> we always fuck with each other. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> we got a few minutes left if you want to some oh my God. no that's what i mean like it's you know it's i i don't know how much you know about the history of boston sports but the it, it, i'm going back full circle to the start of the interview but it really it's really takes special players to win on the red sox you know a special spirit it, and as I said before, we had the team with Manny Ramirez and those guys. They were just so fun and, and carefree. And there were a lot of intense players, too. You know, guys who were tough and would fight. And, yeah. you know, um, you, you know, a lot of guys who were super intense. But for years, the the pressure of winning in Boston was so great, you know, because of the curse of the Bambino. Everybody... Um, would just choke all the players. The teams would just, somebody would choke in the big moment and it just seemed like we were cursed, but it really, I think people could not handle the pressure. And I think it's a great 
thing like your attitude again to me it's the perfect attitude you have to have fun in boston you can't dig in because the media in boston can be tough i mean they'll grind you down yeah. and you know david price had you know a lot of a, a good example of it last year they just yeah. grinded on him you know and and were like <laughs> They just wouldn't let him breathe, you know, and uh, it gets really intense. So, Did you feel, when you entered the league, how much pressure did you feel when the Yankees called you the replacement for Derek Jeter? You know, was a little excited, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of feeling together, excited, nervous, but at the same time, they never give me the time to play. So they say, oh, he's going to be the next Jeter, but Jeter was playing every day. So how are they going to work? Right. And then that's coming every year, the, the same thing, same thing. And I just asked for trade. I asked for, g- give me trade. Give me, give me out here. I want to play someday, you know. But back in what you say, you know what? I, the success around you detect what what kind of person that you are. You know, mm-hmm. you're funny. You excited. You happy. Doesn't matter how much success do you have. You're gonna be the same person. So mm-hmm. I like to be happy. I like to to have fun. I like to make people relax. Uh, it doesn't matter if we have tough game or bad game. We're gonna be the same. So I try to be my teammate to be that way too. So also, yeah. it's not easy to, to win in the World Series. That's a good thing. Yankees are good. Cleveland, Houston, the yeah. Dodgers. So yeah. it's gonna be tough games. And make sure we on the same page. We lose, we happy, we have fun, and that's why we, we won the World Series. That's well, awesome. we were excited to talk to you today. I know my husband was. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. so Thank much. You. On Thank behalf you of much. everyone in Boston, all the Red Sox Nation, all the Wahlbergs. There's a lot of us Wahlbergs, man. We're everywhere. Thank you so Thank much. You Congratulations for having me. Thank yep. you so much. Uh, infielder number 36, Boston Red Sox. Winner! Congratulations. Eduardo Nunez! Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!